military members in uniform are reminded to stand at attention during the national anthem. Active duty military members not in uniform are reminded to stand at attention and place their right hand over their heart. And military veterans and civilian guests are also invited to place their right hand over their heart. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the 7th Bomb Wing Commander and the Presiding Officer, Colonel Ed Sumangel, welcome to the 7th Maintenance Group Change of Command, in which Colonel Thomas Kirkham relinquishes command to Colonel Brady Wilkins. The Change of Command ceremony is a visible means of handing the reins of command from one commander to another. Exchanging the guidon is more than just a symbolic tradition. The guidon identifies the loyalty and allegiance of the unit. Passing it to another officer was, and still is, the literal change of command. Under normal circumstances, the 7th Maintenance Group Guidon would be passed on, representing the responsibility of the unit being surrendered by one and accepted by another. Today, the 7th Maintenance Group Guidon will be posted and presented, but will not be passed, as we are in unprecedented, unprecedented times of adherence to social distancing. Today's ceremony is simple and direct. The departing commander will face the presiding officer, salute, and say, Sir, I relinquish command. He then steps aside as the new commander takes his place in front of the presiding officer. He salutes and says, Sir, I assume command. In all, eight spoken words, but in those eight words are an ending and a beginning. For Colonel Kirkham, it marks the end of a distinguished tour with the 7th Maintenance Group. For Colonel Wilkins, it heralds the beginning of a new and challenging tour of duty. To both, we offer our best wishes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors by Dias Guard, the singing of our national anthem by Master Sergeant Derek Spades, and the invocation given by Chaplain Captain Bermsu Kim.
All right, please relax and join me in prayer as you feel comfortable. Let us pray together. Gracious and mighty God, as we read this today, this passing of command from one to another, we are thankful for those two capable leaders, for Colonel Kirkham, who departs from us, for Colonel Wilkins, who now takes the reign of our seventh maintenance group. And Lord, our God, we give you thanks for the faithful ser service and skilled leadership of our departing commander, Colonel Corbin. Two years ago, in a gathering much like this, we pray for wisdom, vision, loyalty, commitment, and the ability to inspire confidence and enthusiasm. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings we have received. It is with our confidence from the past and hope for the future that we again seek your blessing. Lord bless Colonel Wilkins in his new command with his new responsibilities and challenges. Bless his family and with increased resilience, love, and support as they face new challenges with him. Bless us as well that we may take what they have given us, leverage it, and benefit the Air Force and our Air Force family in times to come. Give us the commitment to serve our new commander well. And thank you for your never-ending love, strength, courage, and guidance. He's unlocking to full potential of this outstanding maintenance room. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you, Dias Honor Guard, Master Sergeant Space, and Chaplain Kim. I would like to introduce our distinguished guests in attendance with us today and who are also joining us virtually. Please hold your applause until all are announced. The seventh Bong Wing Commander and today's presiding official's wife, Mrs. Jen Sumigo. The seventh Bong Wing Vice Commander, Colonel Matt Knoll. The seventh Bong Wing Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Eric Duggar. The 317th Airlift Wing Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Mark Umfleet and his wife, Julie. The seventh maintenance group honorary commander, Mr. Gary Grubbs. And the seventh operations group honorary commander and former seventh maintenance group honorary commander, Mr. Robert Rokep. We would especially like to welcome Colonel Kirkham and Colonel Wilkins' family who are joining us virtually today. Finally, we would like to welcome all the families, friends, group and squadron commanders, honorary commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, and team dais warriors that join us in person and virtually today for this special occasion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the 7th Bomb Wing Commander, Colonel Sumigo. COVID-19 pandemic, right, has forced us to make numerous changes to how we operate as an Air Force, and that includes how we conduct change of command ceremonies here at Dias Air Force Base. Thank you for your flexibility, multiple changes as we went across this summer for our, our change of command season, and, uh, and for the work that you did to make these ceremonies meaningful and reflect the traditions of the profession of arms as we continue to adjust to our new abnormal here at Dias Air Force Base. To the Change of Command Committee, thank you for the work you did uh, to make this a, a special day for Colonel Kirkham, Colonel Wilkins, and the Airmen of 7th Maintenance Group. As I told you yesterday, it's hard enough to prepare for one of these events. COVID-19 just, just ups the ante in terms of complexity. To the 
Dice Honor Guard. This one here. Phenomenal as, as always. SSR Dark Spades. Where's, where'd he go? Uh, again, phenomenal. Uh, thank you for that wonderful rendition of our national an anthem. Chaplain Kim, thank you for your, your inspiring words and for your continued prayers and blessings over the airmen of the 7th Maintenance Group. Today we will conduct a time-honored military tradition that symbolically represents the formal transfer of authority and responsibility of a military unit from one commander to another. This is a bittersweet moment for Colonel Tom Kirkham as he relinquishes command of the 7th Maintenance Group to Colonel Brady Wilkins. But today, we also get the opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments of the 7th Maintenance Group Airmen over the last two years under Colonel Kirkham's outstanding and steadfast leadership. The history of the 7th Maintenance Group is inextricably linked to the history of the 7th Operations Group and the 7th Bombing. Because whenever there are airplanes flying around, there are always maintainers there fixing it after we go out and break it. Our lineage goes, dates back to September 1918 with combat action in, first, in the First and Second World Wars. The, second, the seventh bomb wing was also pivotal to the U.S. victory over the Soviet Union in the Cold War, and elements of the seventh bomb wing participated in the B-1B's combat debut in 1998 during Operation Desert Fox, a four-day operation, operation against Saddam, Saddam Hussein's Iraqi forces. Since 9-11, the 7th Bombing has been in constant combat rotation through the U.S. Central Command Area Responsibility with brief stints to the Indo-Pacific Command AOR to keep North Korean aggression at bay. What we know for sure is this, over the past 100 years, Airmen of the 7th Bombing have brought the fight to our enemies. Most recently, 7th Bombing Airmen prepared for and conducted operations in support of Operations Freedom Sentinel, Inherent Resolve, and Deliberate Resolve which resulted in the, in the annihilation of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. The 7th Bomb Wing most recently, and on short notice, and in the midst of a global pandemic, deployed four aircraft and approximately 200 airmen to the Indo-Pacific Area Responsibility. It was a feat that surprised our adversaries. I'll tell you this, none of these accomplishments were possible without the airmen and maintainers of the 7th Maintenance Group. This most recent accomplishment was made possible by the dedicated leadership of Colonel Tom Kirkham. And that's not even the bulk of what the group has accomplished under his command. Tom, over the last two years, you and your team truly outdid yourselves. Your team of maintainers generated almost 400 combat sorties to destroy 1,700 targets, successfully deployed B-1s and airmen to Nellis Air Force Base to support the weapons school in their capstone event before graduation, your team was pivotal in three bomber agile combat employment experiments with the 317th and 19th airlift group. In the process, you helped demonstrate a new bomber employment concept that prepared the wing for great power competition. You also helped our B-1 fleet get back to health. When I showed up here for senior officer qualification in April 2019, if you recall, we had two jets on the ramp. Your efforts and leadership helped nurse the B-1 fleet back to health, ensuring that we have a fleet capable of delivering air power when called upon to do so. Your team demonstrated that capability during the Iranian crisis in early 2020, and again during our most recent BTF tasking to indo pakistan Most importantly, you provided the needed stability through two safety stand downs, a one-time inspection of the B-1 egress system in September 2019, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, which we can all acknowledge has been the most trying times in our Air Force and our country. All this while enduring personal sacrifice as you had to be away from Mahdi during this demanding command tour. Please know that you made a huge difference to airmen at the maintenance group and to Dias Air Force Base. And you helped set the foundation for the platform and the community success over the next 15 years. You epitomize true leadership and enable the entire team's mission success. Thank you. On a personal level, Tom, I want to thank you for your friendship and freedom for being a voice of reason as we face these challenges together. You are a phenomenal teammate and your fellow group commanders, Colonel Newell and I, will surely miss your friendship. 
I wish you the best of luck at the Barksdale Air Force Base as you move on to your staff gig at Air Force Global Strike Command. Just don't forget us little guys when you're up there. As we bid farewell to one outstanding leader, we welcome another, Colonel Brady Wilkins. Colonel Wilkins comes to us from Air Force Global Strike Command Air Force Staff by way of a short notice expeditionary maintenance group command deployment, helping to stand up an air expeditionary wing at Prince Sultan Air Base, Saudi Arabia. He has maintenance experience in all three bombers during assignments to Ellsworth Air Force Base and squadron commands at Whiteman and Barksdale Air Force Bases. He also brings air overseas experience to the table with command assignments at Getty Air Base, Italy, and staff experience in USAFE. Most importantly, Colonel Wilkin Wilkins comes to us highly recommended by leaders whom I trust. I cannot think of a more qualified leader to command this group at this critical time in our wing and our nation's history. Brady, welcome to Team Dias and welcome to the big country. Continue to instill professionalism in your airmen, focus them on executing the mission with passion, and lead and inspire them to excel every day. Know that you have my utmost trust and respect to lead them well. I look forward to working with you to lead and serve the Airmen of the 7th Maintenance Group over the next year. And finally, to the Airmen of the 7th Maintenance Group, you continue to be in extremely capable hands. Continue to be the professional, mission-focused warrior leaders our nation expects you to be. Give your leadership your best, hold your heads high, stand tall, and continue to make us the greatest Air Force the world has ever known. More sad about them. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Colonel Sumagill presents the Legion of Merit to Colonel Kirkham. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of Legion of Merit to Colonel Thomas C. Kirkham, 1 June 2018 to 2 July 2020. Colonel Thomas C. Kirkham distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 7th Maintenance Group, Dias Air Force Base, from 1 June 2018 to 2 July 2020. During this period, his inspirational leadership determined advocacy and commitment to innovation was instrumental to contributing to the mission effectiveness and war fighting capability of the 7th Bomb Wing. Colonel Kirkham expertly commanded 1,550 personnel responsible for maintaining 33 B-1B bombers and 28 C-130J aircraft, culminating in the execution of over 5,200 sorties and over 42,000 flying hours between both programs. His leadership and expertise proved pivotal as the 7th Bomb Wing successfully deployed to the United States Central Command Area of Responsibility and direct support of Operation Inherent Resolve, Operation Freedom Sentinel, and Operation Deliberate Resolve. His team of 297 maintenance professionals generated 390 combat sorties that led to the destruction of 1,700 targets, decimating Islamic State of Iraq and Syria enemy combatants. This milestone event marked the first ever total force integration deployment for the B-1 Enterprise. Colonel Kirkham also successfully deployed four B-1s and 85 airmen to Nellis Air Force Base for the Weapons School Integration Capstone event. The brilliant performance of his maintenance team led to 37 of 39 scheduled sorties being executed and the graduation of two Air Crew members. Immediately following the successful Weapons School Integration deployment, he then redeployed two B-1 bombers to Naval Air Station Fort Worth, where his team regenerated both aircraft two times in only 17 hours and with only 24 personnel. This Herculean effort demonstrated the 7th Bomb Wing's ability to deploy small, tailorable bomber packages to remote locations across the globe. He also championed the reactivation of the B-1B and 8th Defensive Avionics System, which gained initial operational capability in 2020. Both of these efforts have helped usher in a new era of dynamic force employment, which has proven extremely timely as we shift our focus to the Pacific Theater of Operations. Finally, Colonel Kirkham revitalized the health of the B-1 fleet during the readiness reset period by focusing his team on training, reducing delayed discrepancies, reinvigorating the dedicated crew chief program, and adhering to bomber tactics, techniques, and procedures. His focused efforts led to a 31% increase in qualified maintenance technicians, the completion of over 2,100 delayed discrepancies, and six of 10 maintenance metrics trending in a positive direction, ensuring the longevity of the B-1 bomber. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Kirkham reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the 7th Mainish Group Commander, Colonel Kirkham. Good morning. Um, I'll get to wing leadership here in just a minute, but I got some things I want to hand out. So, uh, I know that Sergeant Spates already left, but uh, at Sentia, can we give him a round of applause for that outstanding addition of that? Our narrator, Sergeant Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Stephan. I really appreciate it. Project officer for this event, Lieutenant Summerlin, Jonathan, thank you for making this event possible. The entire protocol staff, Ms. Biddle, Donna, thank you so much. Our honorary commanders, Gary, Bob, uh, you guys, your support of this wing and this mission is second to none, and you are both just true patriots, and I'm glad to call you a friend. Thank you for being here, I appreciate it. Jim, thank you so much for being here as well. Ball Scout, we've got uh, 317th Representation Chief Umfleet, Julie, uh, Clint, Don, Izzy, thank you all for being here. It's a team family event, and it's good to see my brothers and sisters from the 317th there as well. So thank you for, for coming and support. It's always difficult leading a winning team, and in just a few short hours, I'll be departing Air Force Base, Dice Air Force Base, with a heavy heart. But as they say, all things must good to come to an end, and the time has come for me to move on. First, let me say that it's been absolute honor getting to know and work with the command team here at Dias Air Force Base. Colonel Sumigil, Colonel Newell, Chief Duggar, fellow group commanders, Bender, Brent, Jeff. It goes without saying that we've been through some difficult times over the past 12 months. Whether it was fleet grounding safety stand downs, aircraft structural concerns, or most recently COVID-19, we've had to overcome some extreme hardships. But the commitment, resolve, and professionalism of this leadership team Ensure the 7th bombing was able to weather the storm, and I am grateful for the mentorship and knowledge I gained from working with a group of such outstanding professionals. So thank you. Colonel Wilkins, you're a lucky man. I can assure you that the men and women of the 7th maintenance group know how to execute the mission and will go above and beyond to make sure that our aircraft and munitions are always combat ready. In spite of the challenges we faced over the past two years, they never let me down and I know they will do the same for you, and I wish you all the best. And to all the maintainers out there in the audience who are joining us virtually, I am extremely proud of your accomplishments. Over the past two years, you have performed admirably. Your ability to execute the mission day in, day out, has been nothing short of spectacular, and your hard work and dedication has earned you a glowing reputation, not only in Air Force Global Strike Command, but throughout the Air Force. Everyone knows that when it comes to providing B-1 combat firepower, no one does it better than the 7th Bomb Wing. Your ability to build bombs, fix support equipment, deploy to faraway places, and generate aircraft is second to none. Your outstanding performance over the past two years has been nothing short of spectacular. During the 2018 unit inspection, this inspection your efforts ensured the 7th Bomb Wing was rated effective in all four major graded areas showcasing our readiness and ability to execute the mission. Your steadfast commitment to improving the health of the B-1 fleet led to a reduction in the average of number of delayed discrepancies being carried by each aircraft from 38 down to 19, and that number continues to decrease. Our MC rate has soared over the past six months, so much so that Air Force Global Strike Command is considering raising the mission-capable rate metric for the entire B-1 fleet. Your focus on maintenance training reduced the backlog of personnel and qualification training by 43% and yielded a 27% drop in personnel in the excessive training category. Additionally, the number of seven level trainees and upgrade training was reduced by 63%, and the number of maintainers that were overdue personnel evaluations dropped 66%. So what does all this mean? In short, your efforts have resulted in a better trained workforce and is a primary reason why six of our 10 maintenance metrics are trending in the positive direction. More recently, we deployed four bombers and 145 airmen to Anderson Air Force Base Guam for a bomber task force mission, ushering in a new era of dynamic force deployment. This flying schedule for that deployment was extremely aggressive, and you successfully generated 35 sorties to include 12 higher headquarter missions with zero maintenance cancels. All of these remarkable feats ultimately contributed to the 7th Bomb Wing earning the Meritorious Unit Award for Air Force Global Strike Command for the period of 2018 and 2019. More importantly, 
Each and every one of you should know that these accomplishments were not attained by chance or good fortune. They were achieved through hard work, discipline, and personal sacrifice. You met every challenge head on, and I truly admire your grit and determination. Lastly, I want you to know that it's been the honor of a lifetime to serve as your commander. As some of you know, this will be my final command tour, and I can't think of a better place to conclude this part of my career than right here at Dias Air Force Base. I am truly humbled by the work that you do to protect our freedoms and way of life, all while enduring the bliss, blistering West Texas heat and with equipment and aircraft that are decades old. Your commitment to the mission is unparalleled, and through your actions and deeds, you prove to the world every day that the seventh bomb wing is ready to answer the call anytime, anywhere. Lastly, Buddy, I know you're out there listening. I'm finally coming home. Godspeed, team guys. Sir, it has been a great honor to serve under your command. The men and women of the 7th Maintenance Group thank you for your leadership, support, and dedication. We wish you good luck and Godspeed in the future. On behalf of the men and women of the 7th Maintenance Group, the Deputy Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Vassella, will now render Colonel Kirkham his final salute as their commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command. Attention to orders. By order of Colonel Jose E. Sumangel, Special Order Number G-2026, Colonel Brady J. Wilkins assumes command of the 7th Maintenance Group, Vice Colonel Thomas C. Kirkham, effective 31 July 2020.
As I assume this role, I recognize that relationships are the cornerstone of mission accomplishment. And in the coming days ahead, I look forward to meeting each and every one of you and forging relationships of mutual trust and respect to ensure that we continue to accomplish the Dias mission. And uh, the advice I've always had when uh, doing a change of command was uh, the three Bs, be present, be brief, and then be seated. So with that said, let's get to work. On behalf of the men and women of the 7th Maintenance Group, Lieutenant Colonel Vasalo will now welcome Colonel Wilkins with his first salute as their commander. This, this concludes today's ceremony. Please stand for the singing of the Air Force song and remain standing for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, please remember to put your masks on as you leave the area. 